cover and using a random orbital sander. I just got this one from um, Harbor Freight, so super cheap. And I'm going to sand the closed cell foam off of this until it's just the plastic that it's exposed. I'm using an 80 grit sandpaper and I got this huge box of sandpaper off Amazon. So I will link that up in the description below too. Taking it down fast enough, so I'm actually going to switch to a 40. Okay, so I basically got it to about this point, and you can see I got the majority of the foam off, and the plastic is starting to see through. So once I get to this point, I'm going to go ahead and switch back to the 80 grit so that it's less aggressive on the plastic and just finish getting the rest of this off. Okay, so this is all done now. The most important thing is that you get all the loose particles off so that your glue has a nice surface to adhere to. Um, you don't have to get every single thing off, but do get it as down to the plastic as you can without changing the shape of the plastic. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to just wipe this down with some isopropyl alcohol because uh, I don't have any wax and grease remover right now. Um, and then I have a little tack cloth that I'll use before I spray this down. So stay tuned and I will show you the next part of the process of reupholstering this top. Next thing you do after you have prepared your lid cover is to make a template. This is an optional step if you are going to just do a single piece of vinyl. Uh, make sure that you just lay this down on your vinyl. Give yourself enough room on the edges to fold it in and cut out your piece of vinyl. But I'm going to do a three piece. So I'm going to take a template of the top. So for the next part, you're going to want to grab a little bit of masking tape and just put that onto your wax paper to hold it in place and this is going to be symmetrical so you only have to do one template and you'll just mirror reverse it to get the other side and I'm just going to take the actual not doing a very good job trying to record and hold this but the actual line of the console lid and then I'm going to add whatever seam allowance I'm using onto it. So I'm using a 3 8 so I'll add 3 8 on each side of the part that's sewn up here. And then just remember to give yourself oh, about an inch or three quarters of an inch underneath here to allow for folding. And then with the seam allowance, this is about what your pattern is going to look like. So go ahead and cut out around your template and then we will start cutting out the vinyl. Okay, next thing you're going to do is get your fabric of choice, whether that's vinyl or suede. I'm using a black vinyl in a G-grain pattern. Um, this is by Softside. And it feels and looks like leather, so I really, really like it. Um, and then you just use a normal piece of chalk and start tracing your pattern. Then take your next pattern and remember that you're going to do one like this and then you're going to flip it and do the mirror image for the other side. 
And next, just go ahead and cut out your vinyl. Uh, just a tip for you, I always try to cut just inside your chalk line because otherwise you're making your patterns just a tiny bit bigger than they actually were. So go ahead and cut those out and we'll come back to the next step. And before we put our shears away, the next thing we're gonna do is get some closed cell foam and measure out how much we need. So what I do with an object that's not straight is I kind of roll it and see, okay, that's not gonna be enough. So I move it forward. Okay, that gives me about an inch there. I roll it here, it gives me about an inch overlap there. Try to keep it centered, roll here. Um, so then you can just take pencil and go, okay, I need it right here. Just gonna cut it square. That's good. And then roll it back. And same thing, cross it back. There we go. And then once you have this, we're gonna go ahead and cut that out. And this is a 1 8 inch closed cell foam, which is what you're going to want for your armrest. And then from there, you can, you know, trim the edges down a little bit further so, you know, you can round these off so that you don't have so much bulk. And you can, of course, trim it off when we go to install too, which I'll show you how I handle that on this one. Go ahead and start sewing these together. Uh, the most important part is going to be lining up the middle. So how I do that is I take my piece and I fold it in half. I cut a little triangle out of it, very small, so that it ends up looking like this. Do that on both sides. Do that on here as close as you can. I would say that the top part is more important than lining up the bottoms right now. There. So now you know approximately where center is and you can line up your pattern accordingly. All right, now we're gonna go ahead and start sewing. Remember to use the same seam allowance that you use to make your pattern. So I use 3 eighths there, I'm gonna use 3 eighths here. All right, after we finish sewing, the next thing that we're gonna do is check the fitment before we do our top seam. So start with your inside out pattern currently and then check to see okay this is steep side so try to get it about in the middle and then you're just going to kind of fold and tuck these over so that it's right side out all right and then just pull up all your edges so that they're semi-even all the way around. Then you're gonna wanna check your fitment. Do you like where your seams are lining up? Um, of course, I don't have this pulled down completely tight. Uh, one thing you're gonna notice is that your seams are gonna look a little bit kind of bunchy and it'll look better once you do your top stitching, but you also have the option to, and I recommend that you do this so that it lays flatter is flip your pattern inside out again. And anywhere that you see a curve, whoops, you'll want to notch those out with little triangles, just like we did with the reference marks, but we're gonna add more. So I'm gonna do that on all the curves, like this one's already trying to bunch out itself, so I'm gonna cut a little triangle in there. Just don't get too close to your seam because it will actually pull apart um, or it'll have a gap and it just won't look good. So go ahead and start notching your corners so that they'll lay flat and then we're gonna do our top stitch. 
Okay, now we're gonna go ahead and do the top stitching. I'm gonna do a single seam stitch on mine. You also have the option to do a French seam. I'm not gonna go into details on those. I'm sure there's lots of YouTube videos on the options out there, so. There you go, that is the top stitching, and I'm gonna go ahead and do the same thing on the other side. All right, the next thing that we're gonna do is we are going to look at the fitment with the foam in place. So my suggestion would actually be to go ahead and glue this foam into place with your contact cement or whatever you're gonna use. So unfortunately, I forgot to start the camera when I was shooting this, but basically what I did was I took contact cement and after I had put the foam on, I put contact cement over the top of it and contact cement on the bottom of the vinyl. And then before I stuck those together, one thing I forgot to tell you is I put a little mark in the middle of the foam and a mark on the middle of the uh, vinyl so that I could line them up when I was pulling it over. So after you put the glue on, you let it get a little tacky and then you just kind of start smoothing out the vinyl and then you pull it over the top like this, like this, so that you have it tight and smooth all the way down. So the next step is going to be gluing the inside here. I'm probably going to use a, a paintbrush instead of my normal glue pot to get this on. Alright, so I'm going to take my contact adhesive and hit some of these spots that lifted where I didn't get enough glue before. I'm just going to get that on both sides and then let it get a little bit tacky and should be good to go. Start with the corners, especially when you've got screw cut screw holes that you don't want covered. And then that way you can kind of pull down from the corner. Because it's a lot harder to get the wrinkles out of the corner if you just try to end up there. And then if you find spots that aren't quite sticking, um, you can add more glue. And it does take a little bit of pressure on contact cement to get it to really grab, so. Okay, so the next thing I wanna check is just that all of the rough edges are gonna be covered. So I'm just gonna set in the hinge. And it looks like we should be good to go. Let's go install this. And here it is all installed. So what I really like about it is that the black really gives it a modern look. It's got the teal stitching, which is gonna go great with my shift boot when I finish that, and the new seat covers that I'm making. However, some things that I really don't like is I can tell that I made this pattern just a little too small because of the stretch that's happening here in the seam. So that means I need to make an adjustment to the pattern going forward. And the other thing that I don't love about this is that because I did a single seam, there's bulk right here. And one way to avoid this would have been to do a French seam, which is where you do a stitch on this side and a stitch on this side. or Alternatively, if you were to back this vinyl with like quarter inch foam instead of just putting it on closed cell foam, 
that would eliminate this line. It's a lot more visible on camera than it is in real life and I can live with this for now. So that is my teaching moment for you on how you can make your cover look a little bit better. Alright guys, thank you so much for tuning in this week. Next week I'm going to be showing you how to do the shift boot and after that I'm going to be showing you the full seat redone in this car. I'm super pumped. Again, thank you so much for watching. Make sure to subscribe, leave a like, leave a comment. I really appreciate it. It helps this channel grow and that way I can keep making better and better videos for you guys. So stay safe. I'll see you soon. Is there